65% of the population cannot find $500 in case of an emergency. So in case there's something in their lives, their children's lives, whatever, um, a parent, they come to an emergency and they need to find some sort of funds, some money. 65% um, cannot, cannot find a way to get $500 in case of that emergency. Whether the emergency costs that or not, that's just a, a statistic, it's a fact. I mean, this is what's been thrown around. And what does that tell me? 65% of people in this country cannot find $500 in case of emergency. That's, that, that's horrible. I mean, that's detrimental. I mean, that could mean, in some cases, life versus death. I mean, if it's a medical emergency or it's a severe issue like that, I mean, that's a huge thing. Is $500 a small number? No. $500 is a substantial amount. And it's a huge amount for people who are lower on the spectrum of funds and finance. The, the poor, the downtrodden, that kind of stuff. So why am I saying this? Well, I'm saying this, and I, I want to preface this to say, I don't know at all. I know only a little, but I've grown the knowledge so much more over the years because um, 20 years ago, maybe, maybe a little more, yes, I, I was just out of college, that kind of stuff. I was probably one of the statistics in that, probably one of the people in that statistic, you know, um, just because I could not, in case of emergency, find or scrape together $500. Would I have relatives, far-reaching relatives, that maybe with a lot of work and uh, sweat and tears maybe could have pulled that off? But as I look back at it, I, I, I think that would be a, a huge struggle. Uh, and there are people that are in uh, circumstances, situations, way worse, you know, than I had, you know, as far as that goes. So if 65% 65 of the population cannot scrape together for find $500 in case of emergency, that says a lot. Um, that tells me that we need to do more as a nation and more as uh, citizens to try try not to go blindly along with everything the government sells you and everything the, the banks say and that kind of stuff and be a little proactive in your future, in your current situation, in your children's future, in your children's current situation, that kind of stuff. And I know I've said this kind of stuff before uh, about that as far as assets and preserving and protecting your wealth and that kind of stuff. And I say that through you know, your metals, your gold, silver, land, all those things that I've said over the years, or over the year and a half, almost two years. Um, so I'm just saying this now because I think that was a huge number. And I just want to say I do not follow Dave Ramsey, really. I mean, I, there was a, a time in my life, probably 15 years ago, that I dove deep, you know, and that kind of stuff. And I, um, I got on the side of it. I mean, I, and it, it, nothing he does is wrong, really. It's all a matter of perspective. But as far as what benefits me and what I found, for me, I, I don't really follow a lot of it. But he does have some good points. And I just want to go over some of his baby steps here. And I'll put my little angle on them and what I've learned over the years with that. And I think the baby steps thing, if, if people have no direction, they don't know what to do, they, they know nothing, but they find themselves in a huge huge amount of debt and there's no end to it, I think the Baby Steps thing is a good starting point for sure. Um, so I'll just go over some of them. Uh, first, I mean, save save $1,000 for a starter emergency fund. To save $1,000 for a starter emergency fund. That's, that was huge. Back in the day, I mean, that was huge to me. How can anybody get $1,000 and save it and not have to spend it on the needs that they need for their apartment, as living in that kind of that at that time, or the food or gas or whatever it is, that was my thought. I'm like this is, the, I mean, I wish I could be like that. I wish, I wish I was able to do that. I wish I was able to save a thousand dollars for emergency fund. I, that was huge.
But what I didn't do is I didn't look back at, well, is it possible? What am I doing now that prevents me from doing that? Because there was a lot of stuff I was doing back then that was preventing me from doing that. A lot of waste with my, the money I was getting, my paychecks, uh, a whole ton of waste. That I wasn't seeing that as being a waste. I was just looking at that as this is my life living and I'm just, I keep going and I keep going, I keep going forward, not seeing, not stopping, not slowing down, saying, hey, is everything I'm doing on a daily basis, is everything I'm doing on a weekly basis, is that benefiting me? Now, is that benefiting me, you know, in a few weeks, a few months, in a couple of years, is it going to be my benefit? Or is it going to do nothing? Or is it hurting me, hindering me? Is it putting me in debt? Is it making me so I'm not self-sufficient? I'm not able to support myself as much as I would be able to, um, to be independent. I didn't do that. I didn't look at that until I started looking at things. I, I don't know how. Something just hit me in the face and, and thought, wow, I need to change things. But anyways, I'll stop with that rant. So that was one. Another one is pay off all debt using the snowball method. What's the snowball method? The snowball method is something to the, the liking of you look at all your bills you got, not excluding your, your mortgage if you have a house, all the bills you have, and you go down the, no matter what the interest rate is on, but you go for the lowest one. If you got a, a credit card that's $500 or $1,000 that you want it, you put that as your number one focus. And you pay minimums on everything else, but anything extra you put on that, the lowest priced one, the lowest one with the lowest amount on it. And the whole idea behind it is because once you knock that off, you'll see progress, you'll see results. You'll be, okay, I, I don't have that debt anymore. So then that's, that gives you, you know, more of, a, more of a push. You can see more of a growth. So then it gives you even more excitement and more energy to do it and keep continuing. So then you hit the next one, the next lowest one. Because you got the lowest one off, now that becomes your lowest one. You knock that one off. And then you, so on and so forth until you get it all done. That's the snowball method. And then it says save three to six months of expenses in a a full emergency fund um, for a full emergency fund. So three to six months, I mean, back in the day, that was huge. It's like, yeah, that's never going to happen. Well, um, the way Dave, at least from when I was listening to him and read his books back in the day, and it's been a while, so I could be a little off on some of the stuff, but the way I took it from him anyways, is you want three months to six months of cash, readily available cash in the bank account. Um, to be accessed. And that's a great thing. But over the years, and what I've learned is, well, I, I, I don't, I mean, yes, it's great. You, you want cash to be accessible instantaneously. I mean, I, you can get it in a second or you, within half a day if you need to. Um, I agree with that, absolutely. And I, I, I'm also on the, the opinion of um, holding funds in the bank is nothing to your benefit whatsoever. It's only the benefit to the bank, and it's only going to hinder you more. That's my my opinion only. So um, I guess I would sort of want to tweak that a little bit and keep a good amount of cash, um, whether it's in a safe you have, whether it's buried in your backyard, whether it is with uh, a, a in-law or a parent or um, you know one of your siblings, and, and they're safe or something like that, whatever. And if you have a, a privately owned safe deposit box, you could do it there too. I would veer away from the, the bank safe deposit boxes. Um, so then you just need to have liquid stuff. So if you want to do it with uh, metals and, and gold or silver, just make sure you're holding that and it's, it's going to be liquid, it's going to be available. You get some cash for the, the instant liquid you know, availability you need. But then your gold or silver, if you're doing it that way, you need to know, okay, I can get to this, this um, precious metals dealer or I have this person who's willing to buy it from me and pay me cash or pay me check or whatever the case is. I can get to it within a day or two. I know I can get this and I can get this liquidated if I need it in case of emergency. Um, so that's, that's the way I sort of tweak that some. And then the next thing is, 
to invest 15% of your income toward your, your retirement. Well, that's another thing you got. Well, toward your retirement, how are you going to do that? Well, Dave's was, well, you want it in a bank account um, and, or mutual funds. But anyways, that's where you're at for your retirement. Do mutual fund investing is mainly his biggest thing. And you, you want it, you want to have a financial advisor, la da 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 And I have different things to say on that. And I've talked about financial advisor, advisors. You can look back at my video on that. Um, and I'll try to link it to below. But anyways, um, that's all on the market. That's all uh, allowing things to be on the market. I tweaked that. Me, it's just me. I feel it's better to have it in assets, land. Um, if you can, uh, another home or, or rental properties, um, always, or precious metals, that kind of stuff. Anything that's going to be of need and the odds of it losing value are very, very, very low because it's, it's a wealth preservation. You're, if you're in the market, whether it's mutual funds or just stocks, it's gambling. You're gambling. Yes, mutual funds are, are less of a gamble, but it's a, still a gamble. It's a, 10 times more of a gamble than it, there is for precious metals or land or that kind of stuff because that stuff is it's there. It is what it is. It's not you know, relied upon the market and all the, the games they play on Wall Street. But anyways, that's just my take. Let's just start saving for your children's college fund. Well, this should be heavily thought through, especially over the last five to 10 years. And think about, is college gonna be a major thing in the next 10 years? Is it gonna be around in the next 20 years? Sure, there'll probably be especially colleges for those who need uh, to be certified or a degree, an attorney, a doctor, those kinds of things. But really, with the internet, as long as it's still around and it's improving, there's more and more stuff in it all the time. You got everything at your fingertips. And I've went over this before too. You can access it, it's right there. Um, do you need someone to, to be on you to learn, to help guide you, to help teach you? Maybe, if you're that type of person. I mean, people need that for weight loss and stuff too. There's nothing wrong with that. But you can find that without you know, paying 50, 100,000, $150,000 a year on a, a college degree. It's just my opinion. I mean, trade schools now are, are huge. They're big. We're just learning on the job. If you know a way to get into a, a plumber or an electrician or a contractor, whatever, learn on the job. Um, be a gopher, you know, running here and there for a year or two if you need to. I mean, I hope you get up faster than that. You would get into it sooner than that. But if you need to, that's what you do. You just saved, you know, you can round numbers. You just saved $150,000, $200,000 on what you would have paid in a four-year degree at a big university. Um, that might, might be a large number, or could be you might have saved $80,000. Well, $80,000 is huge. Um, so it's just something to think about. Um, and then I'll, one of the, the last, se second to last step is pay off your mortgage. That's great. Yeah, I agree with that too. I have different thoughts on that. I won't go into this right now with how high inflation is and how low mortgage rates are. They're, I mean, really, are you paying interest? If you are, have a 3% mortgage, we'll say and inflation's double that right now, or are you saving money? That's something to think about. It's a different, different discussion for a different day. And the last one is build wealth and give money to charity. Well, give money to charity is great. I, I agree with that fully. Um, I, I think, do you have to wait that long till all those steps are done until you give to charity? Or can you give a little bit here and there, whatever you whatever you feel in your heart or whatever you think um, is reasonable. And by charity, it doesn't have to be charities, really, in my opinion. Um, some charities are better than others, of course. But um, if it's to your church, if it's to your, your local stores, to your local you know, group that helps, um, if it's to your local neighborhood, whatever, your local community, I think that all goes hand in hand. 
Um, but anyways, I'm getting a little long in this. Those are the steps. Those are my takes on it, whether you care for it or not. Um, and then uh, Dave, from all my reading and all my listening back in the day, I don't feel he fully addressed um, gold or silver or even land ownership. Um, he, didn't he didn't address really the, the Federal Reserve and all the bank banking entities and all the central banks, that kind of stuff, which I think everyone should be educated on, everyone should know about um, before they veer really deep into this. Um, but he, he primarily focuses on mutual funds. I mean, that's his deal, get a financial advisor, mutual funds. And that that's a great angle, but it's not the only angle. I want people to know that. Nothing against Dave. He's a great guy. As far as I've known, I've never met him, but what I've seen and what I've heard and what I've read, great guy. Just a little different way to execute things. And whether you get to the end both ways, I don't know, or all five ways, I don't know. Um, but just remember, the simplest way, the way out of debt, or the simplest way to stay away from debt is to not get in debt, period. Whether that's a, a store credit card or a Visa or a MasterCard or American Express, whatever, do not get in debt. That's the easiest way to stay away from it. Um, if you're in debt, the easiest way to s stop getting any deeper is to stop getting more into debt, to stop getting deeper into debt. Easier said than done, I know. The easiest way to lose weight and get in good shape is to exercise all the time and to eat right. Yeah, I know. Easier said than done, but think about it. The power, you have the power. Um, so always remember, uh, the person that has the ability, the person that has uh, the most access, the person that has um, probably a, the best opportunity, the person that has the the person that has everything that's needed to help or save you, for the most part, I'm just broad brushing this. I know there's there's little different things here and there, but the person that has that, the biggest opportunity, the biggest want the biggest need from your perspective. The person who has that, and the biggest chance, and the most chance to do anything, to help or save yourself, is you. You are that person. No one's gonna come and save you. No one's gonna help, come and help you better than what you would do for yourself, and you will do for yourself. Just remember that. Um, but anyways, I thank you for watching. If you like, hit the like, share, subscribe, that kind of stuff. And as always, stay vigilant, protect yourself, protect your family, protect your wealth, and protect your health.